rooms into the bedroom for evolution. Now, seeing as how we're talking about the whale pelvic bones and testes designed in evolution, let me bring up another example of the alleged evolution that has to take place without causing the extinction of the species. Male mammals have their testes typically in a scrotum which hangs down below the body. Now, there is a reason for this. Sperm cannot be produced at body temperature. It's too hot. Sperm can only be produced at a temperature a few degrees below body temperature. So, by designing the testes to hang down in a sac below the body, the creator solved the problem. The sac can hang down lower to cool the testes below body temperature, thus producing sperm. However, as any man knows, when you go swimming in really, really cold water, you wade in and once the water gets about waist height, men find this very uncomfortable. Their scrotum tightens up and pulls the testicles towards the body and towards the body heat. Warming up the testicles and keeping them at that perfect temperature so as to produce sperm. So how did evolution develop this system? Remember, this is the reproductive system. If it does not work right the first time, it's the extinction of the species. Not only did evolution somehow have to figure out this system of keeping the testicles cool externally, it had to do this multiple times in multiple ways. The bull, bull which uses a scrotum, had to somehow develop a whale tail complete with fluke. Now the male whales have the same problem as any other mammal. They need to keep their testes at just the right temperature. And the water they live in is way too cold, but their body temperature is too hot. So by no fluke, the creator designed a fascinating little system in the male whales. There are special blood vessels which travel to the fluke. The fluke acts as a big heat exchanger with the water, cools the blood down below body temperature. That special blood then travels straight to the testes and cools them down to just the right temperature, a few degrees below body temperature. The testes and their cooling system in the whales, those allegedly useless leftover pelvic bones, which are now crucial to the survival of the whale population, the testes and their large size or lack thereof, are all powerful evidence of design and pose fatal problems for evolution. Dean and Dines sum up their research. Our research really changes the way we think about the evolution of whale pelvic bones in particular, but more general about structures we call vestigial. As a parallel, we are now learning that our appendix is actually quite important in several immune processes, not a functionally useless structure. Indeed, of the over 100 alleged vestigial organs that evolution has proposed over the years, not a one, not a one, is useless. None of them are good evidence for evolution. At all. Now this brings up an interesting point. Oh, if you're 13 or under, you can unplug your ears now. What? You were listening? You weren't supposed to be. Uh, anyway, this all brings up a significant point. All of these alleged vestigial organs were called vestigial by evolutionists and their evolutionary assumptions. Now, many ardent atheists and evolutionists have criticized creationists with completely false accusations. For example, militant anti-creationist Eugenie Scott, former director of the NCSE, the National Center for Science Eradication, once said in an interview, intelligent design, which she considers creationism in disguise, is a science stopper. It stops science in its tracks because you stop looking. Catholic and theistic evolutionist Dr. Kenneth Miller also said something along the same lines, criticizing the creationary camp. Saying that something has a supernatural cause is always possible, but saying that the supernatural can be investigated by science, which always has to work with natural tools and mechanisms, is simply incorrect. So by placing the supernatural as a cause in science, you effectively have what you might call a science stopper. If you attribute an event to the supernatural, you can, by definition, investigate it no farther. If you close off investigation, you don't look for natural causes. If we had done that 100 years ago in biology, think of what we wouldn't have discovered because we would have said, well, the designer did it. End of story. Let's go do something else. It would have been a terrible day for science. But are creationists really science stoppers? Or are the evolutionists? 
It is easily demonstrable that if anything, evolutionary theory has had devastating effects on the sciences and hindered good scientific discovery ever since its inception. This has been especially true for the medical sciences. As an example, vestigial organs. Vestigial organs were invented through evolutionistic thinking. No one except an evolutionist would suggest that an organ in the body had no function. As a result, organs like the appendix were thought to have no purpose. They were useless leftovers from our evolutionary ascent. And now it turns out the appendix plays a role in our immune system. Yes, we can live without it, like you can live without an arm, but it has a negative impact on your health. Other vestigial organs, like the pelvic bones in whales, are not useless at all, but essential to the survival of the species. Dr. Jerry Bergman, a former atheist, now a Christian and young earth creationist, spelled out the case against alleged vestigial organs and showed how they were all designed with purpose. It was evolutionary thinking that hindered the discovery of the roles of these various organs. Evolutionary thinking was what caused people to say that these organs had no purpose. So why waste time researching to find out what they do? It was evolutionary theory that caused so many people to label huge portions of our DNA as useless evolutionary leftovers that don't do anything. Junk DNA. Now, fortunately, many researchers continued on anyway, and the result was the ENCODE project, which published dozens and dozens of papers on the critical functions of this alleged junk DNA. Evolutionary theory has hindered scientific discovery, even in the field of paleontology, causing good, rational researchers to discard the evidence. I could bring up countless instances, but let me bring up just one. Professor Holmes of Charleston, North Carolina, was walking through the outcrops of the Ashley phosphate beds of the Carolinas. Now, we've discussed these beds at length here on Genesis Week previously, as the fossils it contains are wildly varied, yet evolutionary theory would place these creatures as living tens to hundreds of millions of years apart. Finding humans and dinosaurs together alone is the death knell for evolutionary theory, as according to the evolutionary timescale, the dinosaurs became extinct at least 60 million years before the mastodons and humans ever even evolved. Professor Holmes knew this. After finding relics in the phosphate beds and struggling with what to do with them, he recounts, not very long after finding the above named relics of human workmanship and while engaged in our usual visits to the Ashley bed, a bone was found projecting from the bluff, immediately in contact with the surface of the stony stratum, the phosphate beds. We pulled it out and behold, a human bone. Without hesitation, it was condemned as an accidental occupant of quarters to which it had no right geologically. And so we threw it into the river. Alas, we have lived to regret our temerity and rashness. A year after, a lower jawbone with teeth was taken from the same bed, and we now have it in the cabinet. I could give countless examples of how evolutionary theory has hindered proper scientific research, procedure, and discovery. And I lay the blame for this anti-science at the feet of evolutionary theory. Creation science, on the other hand, would point to these alleged vestigial organs and contend that because we were created, these organs must therefore have purpose. And creationary scientists would then seek out that purpose. It would lead to discovery. Creationary scientists have no problem with human and dinosaur remains found together, so they would glory in the discovery of such fossils. They wouldn't be prompted to throw the evidence in the river. Now, I am sympathetic to my evolutionary friends, as I too was raised being taught that evolution was a fact. I too was given entire books displaying what was alleged to be evidence for evolution. It was quite late in life when I dared to question the claims of evolutionism and found the claims not just wanting, but entirely bankrupt and actually anti-science. Don't believe me? Just publicly question evolution and watch what happens to you. 
Real science questions everything and follows the evidence wherever it leads, even if that evidence leads to a creator. However, it's human nature and that understandable fear of our creator